So I wanted to give an update on a holding that I've talked about a handful of times since introducing it in June of 2021. Given everything going on in the market right now, and especially with this company in particular, I decided to sell all of my shares of this one holding. My belief was that given the extreme risk of this investment, I wanted to implement the capital that I had invested in this holding into something else even though it didn't offer nearly as high of a dividend yield. So in today's video, I want to discuss why I sold all of my shares of this one holding and where I decided to put my money instead. The investment I'm referring to that I sold out of is the Credit Suisse Crude Oil Shares Covered Call ETN, ticker USOI. This ETN invests in senior unsecured debt securities that are issued by Credit Suisse that provide a return linked to the performance of the Credit Suisse NASDAQ WTI Crude Oil Index. USOI implements a covered call investing strategy by maintaining a notional long position while notionally selling call options on that position on a monthly basis, which are approximately 6% out of the money. Because of this, USOI pays a variable monthly distribution depending on the premiums generated by the notional sale of these options. This was by far my highest yielding investment in my portfolio, which as you can see according to Seeking Alpha, this thing was offering a yield of 47.35%. At a share price of $71.65, USOI pays monthly dividends, with their last being for $2.84 a share. So this thing generates a ridiculous amount of income each month, and even though it's down quite a bit this year, you could argue that the huge dividend payouts would still make this a worthwhile investment despite it going down for the time being. Something like this could be ideal for someone who's looking to prioritize income in their portfolio, and then when oil starts to recover, these massive dividends would help generate a seriously effective snowball on your holding of USOI. You also don't have to deal with a K-1 tax form, which is also nice. But I want to talk about the reasons why I decided to sell out of USOI. For starters, USOI is unlike anything else out there in terms of a dividend holding. Although it looks like an ETF or maybe a closed-end fund, USOI is actually an exchange-traded note, or an ETN, which is entirely different. Exchange-traded notes are unsecured debt securities that track an underlying index of securities and trade on exchanges. Unlike ETFs which own the securities inside them, ETNs are more like bonds that don't actually own the debt that's inside them. There's a handful of other ETNs out there besides USOI, but there's not many, and USOI is probably the most well-known besides the Credit Suisse Silver Shares Covered Call ETN, which is ticker SLVO, and the Credit Suisse Gold Shares Covered Call ETN, ticker GLDI. By nature, ETNs are extremely risky holdings, and I've always said they should never make up a large percentage of anyone's portfolio. ETNs have default risks since the repayment of principles contingent on the issuer's financial viability. ETNs also hold unsecured debt, which is different than other kinds of debt. Unsecured debt refers to loans that are not backed by any collateral. If the borrower defaults, the lender might not be able to recover any of their investment because they're not required to pledge any kind of asset to cover in the event of its defaulting. This explains why USOI offers such a massive dividend yield given the amount of risk involved. But what's probably the scariest thing about these exchange-traded notes is the fact that the issuing institution, which is Credit Suisse, can choose to delist the security at any time they want to. If this happens, you can lose most if not all of your investment in this holding. This exact situation happened in December of 2021 with the Credit Suisse Mortgage REIT ETN, which was ticker REML. At the time, this ETN was yielding over 20%, which was extremely attractive to a lot of investors seeking income. But the company decided to call the ETN, and as a result, the fund was completely delisted. These ETNs are so risky that Vanguard seemingly tried to do everything they could to discourage me from buying USOI. I'd always get this pop-up that said, This exchange trade and know that you're buying may use complex investing strategies and is therefore intended for only sophisticated investors who understand the risks involved. And then it would proceed to give me an overview saying, ETNs seek to track the return of a specific stock, commodity, or currency index. They're unsecured debt obligations of the bank and other financial institutions that issue them. They don't represent ownership of any individual securities. Although ETNs have a maturity date, they offer no principal protection and they may not pay periodic interest. An ETN's performance depends on a combination of the index the ETN tracks, the underlying securities in that index, and the credit risk of the issuing firm. The second reason why I sold all of my shares of USOI has to do with the issuing firm, Credit Suisse. It's a story that's still developing, and what's true today might be different from tomorrow. As I was making this video, Credit Suisse was seeing if another company would be interested in acquiring them. As of today, that appears to be the case now that UBS has announced that they plan to take over the struggling company for $3.23 billion, which is going to result in the creation of a wealth manager with over $5 trillion US dollars in total invested assets. And I'll be honest, I don't know for certain what impact this merger, if it does go through, is going to have on these Credit Suisse ETNs. Remember, ETNs rely on the issuer's financial viability. Before the UBS announcement a few days ago, people were wondering if Credit Suisse was going to go under. If that was the case, then obviously these ETNs would be delisted. 
I'm of the opinion that Credit Suisse is one of those institutions that's too big to fail. I know it's a controversial topic and there's obviously concerns about whether governments should always step in and rescue specific corporations. I actually sold out of USOI before this announcement with UBS, so it was looking less certain when I sold all my shares. But even if this merger goes through, I don't know what UBS is going to do with these exchange-traded notes. Given the high amount of risk involved, I think anyone would be justified in saying that the odds of Credit Suisse delisting these holdings during our current economic conditions are probably at least heightened. But I want to make it clear that as of right now, I haven't seen or heard anything that would give me any kind of indication that Credit Suisse is likely to delist these securities anytime soon. But at the same time though, in the case of REML, they gave no prior warning before the delisting announcement. It was just something that just happened one day. With these things in mind, I always treated USOI as a speculative holding, which never made up more than 5% of my overall portfolio. If this ETN was called, then it wouldn't leave too big of a dent in my holdings. But I felt like I was always walking on eggshells the entire time that I bought into this. The large monthly dividend distributions were great, but especially right now, it just felt even less safe than it already was. There was never a time owning USOI where I felt entirely comfortable, which is a good sign for anyone that if you hold anything in your portfolio that makes you feel that way, it should purely be viewed as a speculative holding and not something that you depend on for your monthly income if you're living off dividends. If you want to continue to hold these ETNs if you own any of them in your own portfolio, then that's entirely up to you. Just please don't make them a large portion of your overall portfolio. I've read comments from people who claim they've bought tens of thousands of dollars worth of these Credit Suisse ETNs, and that's just something that I would never feel comfortable doing. With these things in mind, I decided to take the money from USOI, which uses a covered call strategy, and instead invested in a different fund that also uses covered calls, which is JEPI. This is the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF, and it's another monthly paying high-yielding investment. It yields 10.74% as of the making of this video, which is nowhere near 47.35% offered by USOI, obviously. But it's been a much better performer, and you don't have to worry about waking up one morning to the news that it's been delisted. JEPI holds a defensive equity portfolio that employs a time-tested, bottom-up fundamental research process with stock selection based on JP Morgan's proprietary risk-adjusted stock rankings. As of the making of this video, I only own two ETFs that are actively managed, but JEPI in particular charges a much lower than average expense ratio for something that's actively managed. All in all, I'm glad I moved my money out of USOI and decided to put it into JEPI, which is definitely a much safer investment. Like I said, if you have faith in USOI, SLVO, or GLDI, then that's entirely up to you. But given the current state of the economy, Credit Suisse, and the oil market, I just decided that right now would be the best time to pull out. I did enjoy the dividend distributions, but right now I'm looking forward to not having to worry so much about this holding. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked what you saw, and until next time, take care.